Okay. Um, so I'm going to be telling my crew if I got to build my own crew. So I'm going to go over the rules that I'm going to follow. One is that uh, my ship, my devil fruit, and my crew must all be canon characters and material. Two, that uh, I can only have 12 players. Six of them are fighters, six of them are supports. All crew members must have a role or job on the crew. And then uh, no crewmate can be a princess or a prince or any kind of a ruler. Uh, I can't have any straw hats with the exception of Robin. Uh, can't be a Yonko or a Yonko commander or current current Yonko commander. Uh, no crewmate can be a CP uh, zero agent, vice admiral, or higher. Uh, no crewmate can be dead unless you are willing to have Gecko Moria. Uh, and it's just that one person. Uh, and I cannot alter crewmates, so if I wanted Kuma, for instance, I can't have Kuma before he had his operations. Unless I have someone on my team that would be able to alter him back, such as Vegapunk. Or if I wanted young Rayleigh, uh, Silver's Rayleigh, I would have to have Bonnie on my team in order to make him young. So, there's that. So, this is my One Piece pirate tag crew building or whatever. My ship will be the Thriller Bark. I mean, it's an island, of course. Um, my role would be the captain, and my uh, other role besides being a captain would be a swordsman, because, well, might as well. <laughs> and plus, it'd be good to not rely heavily on just my devil fruit the devil fruit that i'm going to be taking from someone else obviously would be the soru soru no me or big mom's devil fruit the soul soul fruit now big mom has four special homies or her her homies uh, and those four are um zeus prometheus napoleon and uh Hera. I'm gonna have four as well because why not because if she can have four why can't I have four so I would have um, my first one will be a, sh uh, so a shadow one because why not I mean no one's gonna expect your shadow to come alive and start protecting you unless you they know you have the shadow double fruit but whatever um and then of course lightning you always got to have a lightning base power and a fire base power so my own thundercloud and my own um fireball whatever and then uh my fourth one would be earth because thinking you know i'm sitting there no one's uh they're coming at me, and the earth literally swallows them, and then comes alive. I mean, kind of OP. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I'm going to start with my support characters because, well, they, they'll be doing most of the heavy lifting. So um, my first character will be Gecko Moria. Oh, yes, um, and yes, I'll be using my claws of you uh, having a dead person alive, and the person that I want back alive would be Kazuki Odin, because one, he can read Ponegos, two, he's a uh, can control Zanisha. And three, he's extremely powerful. So, there you go. Um, but, Gecko Morio's role besides uh, 
um, making zombies for me would be the shipwright because, well, it's his ship. So, well, originally it was his ship, the Thriller Bark. Um, my second support character would be Sugar. Uh, and uh, with her hobby hobby, you know me. And, I, and her role on the ship would be the cabin girl. You know, the cabin boy, cabin girl, basically, you know, go do this, go do that type of person. Um, so if you notice, I have the soul, uh, fruit, Gecko Moria with the shadow, and sugar with the, uh, hobby hobby. So basically, any anime I capture, Moria is going to change their, take their shadow away. I'll take their lifespan away to, well, maybe an hour left, and sugar will turn them into a toy which their lifespan will be stopped allowing them to stay alive forever ish and now I have three creatures for the price of one person and so there's that uh, my next support character would be Perona yes Perona the uh, ghost princess um, her um, role on the ship would be the cook. She's been cooking for Mihawk for two years. So why not cook for me? Uh, my next uh, three uh, support characters are going to be tech, tech savvy. Uh, first will be uh, Vegapunk because, well, why not? Um, his he is the inventor of the crew and i'll just keep him at that you can have an inventor uh, he his job primarily will be growing artificial delf fruits and making pacifistas so there's that my next uh crewmate would be judge finsmoke uh he will be the armorer basically keeping making tools and weaponry and suits of armor for everyone so his role uh, that's his role and uh, what I would primarily use him for is making raid suits for all the uh, captains or primary crewmates and then uh, I would have him making clones so as you noticed I have pacifistas, clones, ghosts, toys, homies, and zombies. That's six fodder people that uh, I have. And then plus Vegapunk being able to create artificial uh, devil fruits with the added bonus of him being able to implement it into artificial objects such as toys and um and homies or whatever i make alive this would be give the added benefit of now all my creatures would then be able to be zone users as well then my last supporting char character will be Caesar Clown. He would be my uh, weapons maker. So Vinge Moke is my armor. Caesar Clown's my weapons maker. And his primary job would be to be on the top of the mast of the Thriller Bark, creating high and low pressure. As you we probably remember him fighting uh, Luffy. He uh, sucked out the oxygen in the area, which means he created a vacuum. And by doing so, created high or low pressure, which therefore means if you can create high and low pressure, you can create um, weather, weather fronts. So have him up top, creating high and low pressure, causing the weather to suck in, and creating an overcast so I don't have to worry about my toys which now has no shadow dying and therefore my zombies dying 
and so on. There you go. Uh, so now I have my toys protected. And yes, Sugar's contract would, uh, the second law of robotics, where they have to protect themselves, they wouldn't venture out unless it's overcast or if it was nighttime. So all protected there. Now, on to my fighters. So, uh, since my crew is army based, as in because I want a large army for my crew, um, I need to strengthen them up. So, oh, I forgot one more thing. Caesar Clown, his other attribute besides being the overcast uh, creator, would be to make rumble balls. And why? Well, I can't use any straw hats, so Chopper is out of the question. And since Caesar helped Chopper with creating uh, a way to b increase his monster point, he either knows a little bit or uh, enough of the ingredients of the Rumble Ball to be able to replicate it or uh, be able to find a way to make it. And that way... All the artificial devil fruit users would then be able to pop the rumble ball, uh, making them be able to transform a lot more and have seven forms like Chopper does and so on and so forth. It'd be perfect. So my uh, having uh, ghost, uh, pacifistas, clones, uh, zombies, uh, homies and toys all with artificial dev fruits all with uh, um, rumble balls popped in of course the ghosts won't and uh, but what five out of six being super powered like that awesome my next grouping is my fighters uh, I would have Bella Bet Betty as my army general uh, she, that's her role in the crew and of course uh, it basically gives all my army a plus two for attack basically because her rallying or pumping everyone up and before a battle awesome now they hit harder stronger and are less likely to retreat blah 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 my next character after Hello, Betty would be Bruno. Yes, from CP9. He is no longer CP9. Plus, uh, and as far as we know, we don't. He's not CP0, so he's unknown. So I'm gonna grab him. And the perfect part is he can create air doors to a pocket dimension. In this pocket dimension, no one can harm you. No one can hurt you. Blah blah blah. That's where Sugar will hide. That's where uh, Gecko Moria will hide. That's where I'll be unless I need to come out and fight. And as my army and heavy hitters are out hitting, uh, attacking people, uh, Bruno's opening up doors, allowing these uh, fodder people to come in, allowing us to go through, through the uh, chain gang of... Uh, changing them and making them part of our crew and then sending them our army out at various pockets just think of it bruno goes into his alternate dimension goes behind the enemy crew opens up a door swarms out a whole bunch of the uh, allies and then uh, traps a whole bunch of fodder in the mirror, uh, door dimension and then vice versa so awesome on that. Uh, next is uh, Trafford, uh, Trafford D. Water Law. Or Law. Uh, this is simple because uh, he's a strong opponent. Uh, oh, Bluno will be my master at arms. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. But Bluno will be my master at arms. Easy. He's in the pocket dimension where he can see everything you do. And basically, Master at Arms is basically the police officer of the ship. So, boom. He can enforce the laws that I give. 
without any worry. Anyhow, uh, Law will be the doctor, and while he was fight, he's fighting. Bruno can easily make little tiny doors that Laws can make a room, swap out people, and now the enemy uh, is in the dimension, being uh, down the um, the express line of changing them into zombie homey toy and there you go and then my next one would be Doflamingo he would be my vice captain and that's simple because you can change he can puppeteer people to uh, attack their own crewmates so that creates confusion as well as uh, dead bodies for zombies uh, material not only that, but he can puppet uh, them straight into the door dimension, so it make it easier to collect more people, just like Law does. Boom, there we go. Now we, I need uh, some sort of tank, uh, someone who's fast, someone who can uh, uh, take a lot of damage and be like the focal point for people to attack against the enemy, rather. So I'm going to pick Marco the Phoenix. He can take a lot of damage. He can dish it out. He can uh, he can fight multiple strong enemies at the same time. And there we go. Uh, his role would be the navigator. And uh, yes, uh, everyone's probably perplexed about that. But he his one of his hobbies is a uh, navigation, or so studying maps and stuff like that. That's his hobby. Of course, at being part of the White Beard Pirates, never actually had to use it. But in my crew, I'm going to have them use it. So there you go. Um, so, and then uh, my last fighter. Uh, well, I'm going to solve the problem of a big giant island ship not being able to cross the red line. I'm going to use Shiki the Golden Lion. I mean, why not? He can, and he'll be his role will be the helmsman. He's gonna basically control the ship, raise it up over the red line, and drop it down. Perfect. And then uh, he's as strong, uh, strong enough to compete against Roger. He's excellent combatant. Uh, he can even snipe people from far away with his uh, ability. Perfect. Um, so that's basically my crew. And how I would uh, change one enemy over the next. It's very simple. So a normal enemy, after we get them, Gekka Moria would steal the shadow to put into a zombie. I would then steal all their soul with leaving them a few hours or a day left to live. Uh, so I could th get the max amount of homies. And then Sugar would then turn them into a toy. This will freeze their aging process and so on, so they don't die from me ripping out most 90% of their soul. And again, uh, Gecko uh, Moria's two negatives about the shadow. Uh, Season Clown's going to cover that with making the fog or mist that stays over through the bark. And then with the zombies, I'll just, every time, everyone we make, we're going to just sew their mouth shut. <clears throat> Solves that issue. Uh, after the toy is made, then Vegapunk's going to put uh, artificial devil fruit in the zombie homie and toy. There we go. And then Suzu Clown's going to give them rumble balls. And over time, as my crew progress, uh, we keep training them with rumble balls. And just like Chopper, they'll be able to do it without the rumble ball. And then every time we go into battle, uh, they'll fall in, under command of Bello Betty. And there you go. Uh, if we have an enemy that is a Devil Fruit user, well, first, Judge will come in with a clone. Yes, clone. Then Law will come in and swap their personalities. And then from there, 
we'll just repeat the steps. Get the Moria, we'll rip out the um, shadow of the clone uh, inhabited by the enemy. And I'd steal the soul, turn them into toy, so on. And now that clone, their personality and everything they are, now inhabits their original body. And now I have that devil fruit on my side with a loyal person who follows me and be, still be able to use them as a zombie hom uh, homie toy and so on. Now, if they are a special race like Lunarian, like Kingas, or um, uh, Oni, like Kaido, or any special race that I want to try and create a super clones with, I get judged to take their DNA first and then bring in a clone to swap out and continue down the line. And that's pretty much how I would get my crew. It's basically one giant uh, army creation and uh, manufacture line to create an army, make them a bit stronger, and uh, send them out and collect more army. And eventually, uh, what I would do is just go to uh, islands that are really easy to conquer, east, blue, blah, 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 and just take over that island. Swap them all out with uh, zombies, toys, homies, and I just keep doing that. And then by the time I hit the Grand Line, I'll have armies of tens of thousands, even millions possibly. And it doesn't matter if Kaido may be stronger. Eventually, I will wear him down. And then, uh, and then it'll just simply, Kaido will then go through the line as well. So that's how I become the uh, the Pirate King, and again I would have Odin, uh, Zombie Odin, to be uh, my Pontograph reader, and there you go, I'd become Pirate King that way. Alright, bye.